I have a video for you today about trimming the head and face hair on a golden doodle. Considering my golden doodle Sophie only gets a full coat clip about once or twice a year, I've had to do lots of maintenance trims around the head myself. And today I'll share some of the simplest and easiest ways I've found to give her her particular shaggy dude look. No fancy groomer skills required. In this video, I'll focus on five areas of maintenance around the face and head. But before I do, if you want to see more videos about golden doodles and doodle dogs, consider subscribing to this channel and hit the like button if you find the video useful. The tools I'll be referring to today are a pair of sharp, blunt-ended scissors, a pair of simple thinning scissors, a little battery operated trimmer which I also made a whole other video about and a metal comb to help guide things along. So the first area I focus on is trimming back the hair in front of and between the eyes. This part needs to be clipped or cut back the most frequently, normally about once every three weeks or so because all it takes is a few millimetres growth before it starts to get in front of the dog's eyes again. I take a hold of Sophie's muzzle and hold the head steady and use either a pair of scissors to cut the hair across her stop or I sometimes use my trusty little trimmer to clip this part back. Personally though, I prefer to use the scissors. The second part I cut is the hair just above the eyes, the fringe or the bangs if you like. I start off by sectioning off an even row of hair just above the eyes. I hold the top of the muzzle and use my regular scissors to cut around from the outer corner of one eye to the outer corner of the other eye. Moving on up, the third part I cut back a little is the top of the head. All I do is keep the same pattern and take horizontal sections at the top of the head, only a small section right in the middle of the head. Because I want to keep the shaggy natural look, I use my thinning scissors here. Hold the hair flat between my fingers and scissor across. The cut itself isn't blunt, but I do like to keep the length more or less even. So I usually cut a few times. I keep this pattern going to just behind the top of the head. Still using the thinning scissors, I move down to cut the chin and the whole area beneath the jaw. Effectively, this is about cutting back the beard on about a 45 degree angle. For doodles, this is an area that's prone to really get dirty and smelly because it dips in the water when they're drinking and in the food when they're eating. The way I work this part is to comb the area on either side right up to the middle hold it flat in the middle in between my fingers and cut with the thinning scissors, again because they leave a nice shaggy cut. I'm sure there are more in-depth techniques than this, but for the owner who wants to DIY at home on a longer haired golden doodle, I found this is the simplest, most effective method. The 
final part I like to trim back is along Sophie's upper lip. This isn't necessarily because I like the look, but like the beard cut I just mentioned, it's more about keeping good hygiene. As the hair grows along on the muzzle, particularly over the upper lip, this hair often enters the mouth while the dog is eating and gets dirty from food and saliva. I'm also sure it's annoying for the dog as they're eating. While I really like the uneven cut look from thinning scissors, I often find myself using just regular scissors to cut this part back. What I do is I lie Sophie on her side and comb down the hair above the upper lip line. I section off the top part to get to the hair that's closer to the upper lip. Then I hold and flatten the hair between my fingers to prevent the lip from getting cut and to give a good guideline and cut all the way right along the lip line. For the ears, personally, I really like the long-eared, spaniel look on Sophie, even though she naturally has quite short ears. So I leave her ear hair long and I don't trim it back at all. If I give her some wet, messy food to eat, I have a way of preventing the ear hair from getting all dirty. I take the hair that goes just beyond the ear leather and tie it back with a rubber band. If I were to trim the length of the ear hair back, I'd use my thinning scissors to keep the choppy, shaggy look going. So that's just one way of going about head and face maintenance. If you want to know more about how and why I keep Sophie in a long coat, take a look at the video on the screen. Thanks for watching and see you next time.